Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Team Viewer Remote Control app. So this is used to make remote connections to other computers over the internet or over the network if you need to as well. So it doesn't rely on any VPN or firewall access or any configuration like that. So it just goes straight through the internet and then goes through Team Viewer's servers. Of course, you may need to do some adjustments on your own firewall on your network if it's blocking this kind of traffic for some reason. All right, so on this computer, we're going to download the Team Viewer app itself and install it. And then we'll go to another computer and download the Quick Support, which is used just to make like a one time connection to where they don't have to install the app or sign in or anything like that. They just give you a code and you're connected. All right, so you can use Team Viewer for free. They do allow it for personal use, but I will say if you use it on too many computers or you're using it all the time, uh, they will be watching it and they might cut you off and ask you to buy a business account because they think you're using it for work purposes. So just keep that in mind. So TeamViewer, you know, used to be one of the go-to uh, remote control apps. A lot of people have been complaining lately that it's not as good as it used to be, but it still seems to do the job. So we're going to show you how to use it. All right, so let's start by downloading TeamViewer on this computer here. Let's stick it on the desktop. All right, then we just need to double click it to start the installation. All right, so you could do the default installation or you could do the one-time usage or if you're just going to do one quick session and you're not going to need it again. But if you plan on using it on a regular basis, then you want to do the default installation. And you could have it start with Windows, uh, but that's really only if you want to do like unattended access to your computer, which of course is kind of a security breach, but it depends how worried you are about it, I suppose. All right, so we're just going to click on Accept here to continue. Say yes to the UAC prompt, so you'll need to be an administrator to install this. All right, just wait for the installation process to finish here. All right, we will accept the agreement here. All right, so you don't need an account to use it, but what I've noticed is if you don't use it with an account, it doesn't seem to work as good. You get a lot of session timed out errors, so I just like to make a free account, and that way it's easier just to avoid the potential problems. All right, so I'm going to sign in. Okay, use my test account here. All right, click on open. All right, now the password for this account. Sign in. Okay, so now we're signed in. So now we have this option here to get the ID from the other person's computer. All right, so now we're going to go over to another Windows computer and just download the Quick Support Executable and run that. All right, so we're over on the same page here. So we just need to click on Download Quick Support. Stick that on our desktop too here. All right, so this is just something you run, so there's nothing to install, so we just double click it. And you can see the window is pretty basic here. We just have an ID and password. So we need to give this ID to the person who's going to control this computer. So you do it over the phone or instant message or email, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to copy it here. And we're going to go back over to the other computer and paste it in. All right, now let's click on connect. All right, so it's authenticating. So now we just need the password from the other computer. So they would have to tell you the password they have on their screen. So let's go back over and get that. All right, so that's the password there. And you could refresh it if you want a new password. So we'll copy that. Go back over to the other computer. Paste that in. 
click on log on we have some advanced options here too you want to change the type of access we want full access all right so now we got our window here off to the side for some reason let's shrink it down Okay, so now we're on the other computer with our connection here. It kills the background, just makes it black for the sake of bandwidth. Then you could just kind of minimize this off to the side here. Minimize this too. And now we could start using the computer and support them as needed. Then off to the side, we have some options here for actions. Leave a note, lock the other computer, reboot it, uh, copy and paste stuff from the clipboard, send key combinations, direct keyboard mode, information about it, do a remote update. Change the scaling and quality. So if you're on a local area connection, you could probably go to optimize speed or optimize quality. If you don't want auto select, change the resolution. See, hide the wallpaper is checked by default there. Otherwise, we could see it like that. Show the remote cursor, refresh, screen content, show sessions and tabs. You can set up a whiteboard, show the participants, have sounds come through, augment the session. And then we could even do some file transfer too. So you can see it sets up kind of like a FTP server interface here. So here's the local computer on the left. Here's the remote computer on the right. So let's say we wanted to send this PowerPoint file here. Send it over. And now you can see it's on the desktop of the remote computer. And just close it out when you're done. Then we have some options here for the dashboard. We have some performance statistics, security, and the session if you want. Send control alt delete. File transfer we saw. Reboot full screen and close the session all right so now let's hop back over on this computer here and see what it looks like all right you can see here we have our little window here for our panel we want to close it out from there you can see we received the file right here we have some options here to end the session and if we want to move this little bar around here so, you know, obviously it makes sense that the person you're connecting to has the option to, you know, kill the session if they don't want you on their computer anymore. All right, let's go back to the main computer one more time. All right, so when we're done here, we just close out from here. And now we're done. We can see our recent connections. You could set up any managed devices if you have computers that you're always connecting to. So you have up to three. Uh, any offline devices they connected to. Here's where you could set up chat if you want to use that. And some extra options that they have. Then we have our admin settings. You can see we're using the free plan here, non-commercial use. Buy a license, join a company, start a free trial with the pro version. And that's about it. All right, so once again, just go to the TeamViewer website, download this version here for your main computer, and then install it. You know, use the full installation, assuming you're going to use that all the time, or you could do the one time if you just want to use it once. And then the person you are going to support could just download this and run it. They could also download the full version here and install that. You could connect to them, but that's a little more confusing or a little more time consuming. So that might not be something you want to have them do. So if they don't have a need to use any of the other team viewer features, they could just use the quick support just fine. All right, so I'll put a link in the description for the team viewer website, and then you could try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.